Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about how to boil water or well heat up whatever with a liquid tepidizer. Now a liquid tepidizer works in a way that it will heat up for 5 seconds. If it's submerged it will keep heating but if it's not submerged it will stop working or pretty much regardless if the power is connected it will just heat up for 5 seconds and stop working, right? So the way people use it to get a lot of heat out is to trick it because if you cut power it will restart the process and heat up again for five seconds right i'm gonna start this one up and then i'm gonna explain exactly what i've done uh, so let's i have a pressure sensor so pretty much this whole machinery will start up if my other means of boiling water i talked in my previous video how to boil waters with thermal aqua tuners so well if that's not enough and i still need to get rid of some polluted water this one will kick start right so I'm gonna set this one to 700 kilos, which should be enough, right, to, to get this whole machine started. So it should start heating up now, right? Uh, so you can see here it activated. Now, uh, a lot of people, they, they build this stuff using um, thermosensor only. So pretty much the idea is, when this one heats up, uh, you set the thermosensor to a degree that it will reach, when it reach that degree the thermal sensor cuts the power and then of course it cools down and then it restarts again because the power was cut right there's a few problems with that uh, and the main problem is if it's not something you use all the time but just start up once in a while like for me I only want to start this one if I actually have too much polluted water some say people say you can never have too much polluted water because there's so many uses of it but if you end up having too much polluted water this is what I kind of like to burn it off, right? And to boil it. And anyway, if you have this one, so imagine now you haven't used it for a long while, then it will actually be kind of cold surroundings. So if it only heats for five seconds before the power is cut, it might not be enough to actually hit the level of the thermal sensor, and then it will actually stop functioning, right? Because the power will never be cut, so it won't really start over and heat up again. If you actually set it low enough, so you make sure it hit those levels of temperature uh, well that might not be high enough for the intended purpose or what you want to do or not reach maximum efficiency later on because the power will actually be cut too early uh, for using it to, to its maximum efficiency so I still have the thermal sensor but it's more kind of a fail safe to not make it overheat if I, if I pressure it too much right uh, but it's actually something else that cuts the power that's made to it for optimization uh, just like with any type of like boiling liquid, you need something that heats a lot. In this case, it's the thermal aqua tuners, and in here it's the liquid tepidizer. And then you need somewhere for the steam to, to, to cool down, right? So the gas is pressured or the steam is pressured here through the airflow tiles, and then it's cooled down over here. And the thing I use to cool it down is oil that I cool down with this liquid tepidizer. Um, so you can actually see now the thermal sensor starts to hit. It didn't in the beginning, but now the power is actually cut sometimes by the, the, the thermal sensor to prevent it from overheating, right? Now, what I use apart from, from, from the thermal sensor, that is just simply connected to an OR gate and then down to this one. There's some other connection, but it's simply to, to make sure I only run it when I have enough water, right? The thing that actually cuts the power and turns it on again is this little thing. It's a really neat thing and I think a few YouTubers actually explained this. Um, not, not really put to a practical use like I have, at least not from what I've seen in videos. They just explain you can do this thing, right? They don't really give an example for a practical use for it. Uh, but it's pretty much a blink function, right? So because if you connect that, uh, sometimes these are kind of hard to click, but if you connect a NOT gate to a buffer gate, you will get the blink because the NOT gate will uh, well, turn active, right? If it's, if it's active in, it will be inactive out. Uh, and then you have the buffer gate that will buffer for a certain amount of time. So when this one is active out, it will turn, return to the NOT gate and you will cause a blink that is for as long as the buffer gate is up, right? So if this one would have been connected up here, right? When this one's active in, it will turn this one off. When this one is turned off, this one would be turned on and it would just go around right, like that, right? Uh, the problem with only using these two is that you would get the effect, if you set this to one to five seconds, you can set it to more, right? But it was, won't really matter because this one will only, the tepidizer will only run for five seconds, right? But 
Anyway, um, you would have cut the power and then you would actually have the liquid tepidizer on for five seconds, then you cut the power again, right? And of course, that would keep the liquid tepidizer running constantly and that might be too much heat put for what you'd like to. So what I've done is added a little extra buffer gate here. So this one will actually regulate the downtime, right? So, because when it gets the signal in here, it will keep it for a while active. So this one will get a longer downtime, which means here I can control the, the downtime, how long this one will be off. And here I control the uptime, right? So in this case, it will be on for five seconds and off for 20 seconds. The good thing with this is actually really power efficient because if we look at the power grid, here you can see where I cut the power, right? It uses 960 watts. But in reality, it's got a downtime of 20 seconds and only uptime of five. So the real use is only 20% of 960 watts. So you can see I actually pump in close to one kilo water. I could probably up this one to one kilo without a problem since it's actually almost running dry here, right? Uh, for only about 200 watts. And that's not really that much. So it's really power efficient. The other thing I have that I talked about is the failsafe here. And pretty much the failsafe will just cut the power directly. You can see I have another input to this one. And it's pretty much this little automated setup. So it will sense how much water I have. This thing will only start happening if I have enough water, right? So it's connected to a couple of buffer gates. If this one hits, it will go up to an AND gate, which means if it's enough water here, plus it's not too warm here, then it will actually run, right? Otherwise it will cut the power already up here. It will also cut the liquid flow because of course, if I keep dropping liquid down when this one is off, I will get so much liquid here that eventually it won't really be possible to heat it. It will overflow, right? So I want to cut the liquid as well. I want to cut the power. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, the layers are like this. I got my polluted water in here, intake here. Um, I actually got another polluted water intake here because I sometimes run it to empty out water from below, right? Um, I got the power here with two different power cuts off. Uh, you got one up here and one here. This one is to cut the power uh, if if I, I, I have too much water and don't want it running and this one is simply to put it off and on, right? Uh, actually, let's stop this machinery now. So we say uh, we want it to be 10, right? So that will shut it down. It will actually keep running since I have a buffer gate, it will keep running. The reason I have two buffer gates is just to be able to extend the uptime, right? So it will keep running for a little while and then shut down and then it will shut down the power up here and the liquid pump over here. So I think that was it. You can check out my previous video. I, I will put some stuff here in the end, like a link to the previous video, how to do a two-in-one solution, like cooling your base and boil some water at the same time. So that's a really neat solution. I will also put like a little uh, self-portrait I made long ago. It's like a really round self-portrait that pops up if you want to subscribe. I would be really, really glad if you subscribed. Um, it really encouraged me to make more videos. I can be kind of lazy about that. So some encouragement is always nice. Uh, and yeah, I think that was it. Comment if, if it's something you want to know more or, or something I wasn't clear about. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers.